there's the inmates are running the asylum here and we can't have Donald Trump and Steve Mnuchin just willy nilly able to give all this money to corporations with no strings attached. And we won't we possibly might not even know who the corporations are. Nancy Pelosi, with a straight face, I covered this when she said it, gave a press conference saying, oh, no, these, these corp- the money going to these corporations, it's just a, it's a pass-through. It's going straight to the employees. It's not going to the owners. They were just sending it to the corporations, and they're giving it to their employees, and they're, they're not going to be able to fire employees, which Boeing and other companies that got the corporate bailout are now starting to do. Now, Mnuchin and Trump, in a stunning move, the Trump administration is signaling that it won't disclose the recipients of more than $500 billion in bailout money delivered to 4.5 million businesses through the PPP. Mnuchin says it's, quote, proprietary and, quote, confidential information. The GAO told Politico that the Small Business Administration is also withholding PPP loan data the agency requested as part of its oversight efforts. Color me surprised. Color me shocked. So what you have here is literally a robbery of the treasury using a public health catastrophe as a reason to redistribute socialism. This is socialism straight up to redistribute your money for Boeing, for Amazon, and for these scummy, scummy CEOs that don't need it. And let's, let's, be, let's be very clear. Trump and Mnuchin are the ones leading the bank robbery. But Nancy Pelosi knew this was going to happen. Schumer knew this was going to happen. Joe Biden knew this was going to happen. They could have and should have fought from the beginning saying, no, the first bill we are doing, we're not giving a cent to corporate America, been there, done that, we bailed out the banks a decade ago, we're not doing it again, we're giving emergency universal basic income monthly, whether it's Rashida Tlaib's bill, Bernie's bill, $2,000 a month to workers, And once you agree to that, then we could talk about corporations. But instead, they basically wrote a blank check for corporate America. Zero, zero provisions in there for strings attached. And apparently, no provisions that they would have to actually, by law, tell you who the companies were that are getting them. For all we know, Trump's giving it to companies he does real estate business with. All we know, this is going to companies in Kentucky that could then give more money to Mitch McConnell's re-election efforts. It's just disgusting because let's be clear, and I don't agree with Jimmy on everything, but I agree with Jimmy on this. None of this shit None of this Republican extremism could happen without the Democrats. None of this could happen without Nancy Pelosi, Schumer, Steny Hoyer, Dick Durbin. All of these people are driving the getaway car, and they've been in Congress long enough. They knew who they were dealing with. Steve Mnuchin is the guy who foreclosed illegally on millions of Americans, predominantly black people, by the way, after the financial crash, which Kamala Harris, by the way, who might be Biden's vice president, chose not to prosecute him on when she had the legal grounds to do, to prosecute Steve Mnuchin. They knew who they were dealing with. Did they think they were going to be transparent on who was getting the money? Did they think they were actually going to hold them to keeping their employees? They're either grossly naive and stupid or grossly naive and corrupt. I think a little bit of both. So, you know, police, for example, if if there's a bank robbery, they don't only go after the bank robbers, they go after the getaway car. They go after the people from the outside that help them. 
plan the bank robbery. They don't just look at the three people that held up the bank. The Democrats are complicit in this. And by the way, this, they're not, they are not revealing who got this money at the same time. Look at this. Over three months, courtesy of Warren Gunnels, Bernie Sanders' advisors, three, money, three months of this coronavirus economic catastrophe. Jeff Bezos, his wealth, up $51 billion. Mark Zuckerberg, his wealth, $34 billion. Buffett, $30 billion increase. Walton family, $26 billion increase. Bill Gates, $25 billion increase. Cokes, or Coke, excuse me, $17 billion. Don't know who Page is. Don't know who Bryn is. Don't know who Ellison is. Balmer, I know, owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, among other things. $10 billion. $243 billion increase in wealth for a who's who of the United Corporations of America, while 44 million people are currently unemployed. I think that number's higher, by the way. 44 million people have filed jobless claims. Approximately 50 million people are without health care in America now, not to mention tens of millions more can't even use the health care they do have. We are in an economic depression. You might not see the soup lines, but we're in a depression. I don't understand how you call 40 million people, 44 million people unemployed, 30 million without health, uh, 50 million without health care because 29 million didn't have health care before all of this. Now you add the 30 million estimates have lost their employer-sponsored health care. You call that a recession or a depression? A depression doesn't necessarily mean soup lines. And that is why, and I don't want to trigger anyone, but I want to give my honest opinion. I, I said it at the end of uh, the live stream yesterday. I covered uh, a protest here in New York. We've been trying to cover as many of these protests as possible. That is why, frankly... As amazing as these protests have been, and obviously I'm a white guy, certainly not telling black people how to run the protests, but I think there's a piece missing from this protest, and that is the economic demands. Of course, first and foremost, you got to stop killing us to the police. But these things are not, in, they're, they're connected. They're, let me tell you something, and, and Jimmy has said this and he's right. If there was a coordinated boycott of Amazon, fast food industry, let's say the meat industry, if, if people could do it, go without meat for a week, this country would come to its knees economically. If the hundreds of thousands of people, it seems, that, that have been protesting around the country, if they all not only marched with their feet, but with their wallets, the oligarchy is willing to wait out the protesters, just like fossil fuel companies, the fossil fuel companies have been willing to wait out the protesters at Standing Rock. Just like police departments were willing and the politicians were willing. Yeah, we'll let them protest in Ferguson. Let them march in Ferguson and Baltimore and these places. Let them tire themselves out. Then we'll get back to business. What they're not willing to do is see their quarterly profits go down. What they're not willing to do is see their power structure go down. And what they're not willing is to see average people, working class people, actually do the hijacking themselves. When I say hijacking, I mean actually exert power through their wallets. So the way to actually get these companies, because corporations are at the helm. It's not the politicians. The politicians are not going to make reforms because they answer to their donors, the corporations. So the only way, the only way that you're going to see real change is if you hit them where it hurts, that's their wallets. That's why the climate movement has seen some gains by getting banks to divest over the last few years from fossil fuel projects. We gotta go further. I'm guilty, I've used Amazon plenty. People need to stop using Amazon. People need to stop going fast food restaurants. And I know it's tough for some people because it's all you could afford for your kids. Walmart, Target, 
the biggest multi-billion dollar corporate conglomerates, you stop using them, let's say for two weeks, you see how quickly change comes. You see how quickly Joe Biden can now make his plan, make his proposals bigger. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.